everybody, welcome to Buffet Minded. Today we're going to be making Swedish cinnamon buns, camel bullar recipe. And Melly and I are very excited about it because we love baked goods for breakfast, don't we? Or really anytime. So the first thing I did was I got my dry ingredients ready. I put in here 405 grams or three and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour, a quarter cup or 50 grams of white granulated sugar, two and a quarter teaspoons or seven grams of instant rice yeast. I think it's much easier to measure things on a little scale. Um, and then we need to combine a quarter um, cup of unsalted butter, about 56 grams, and one cup of milk. We're gonna heat it to 110 degrees. So I got that going right here. Let's turn it on to start it going. And I got my little measure so I can make sure it's 110 degrees because we don't want to kill the yeast because this dough needs to rise, oopsie, let me change this to this side, uh, for about an hour. So while I'm heating this, I will go ahead and let you see Melly one more time and we will be right back. So it looks like it's starting to melt. We don't want to cook it too hard. We don't want it to boil over. And we also don't want it above 110 degrees because we don't want to kill our yeast. We love making bread. It feels so like early peasant woman. Oh, look, it's heating up. Oh, 100, oh it might be already at 100, 109. Look, it's at 109. Okay, it's almost there. It just says, just melt it. And we'll cool it down if it gets over that. I got this little candy thermometer a while ago. I don't use it that often, but it's nice to have. Oh, it's already over 110, so I'm gonna take it off the heat. And I'll just stir it around. I've been using this Irish butter and the color is so beautiful. Isn't it, Molly? Yeah. You think it's a beautiful color? I do too. Okay, here we go. Let's see what it is now. It's a little too hot. Stir it some more. Here we go. Still 115. It's getting there. So I'll bring you back when it's 110 and we're about to add it to the dough. All right, we will test the uh, thermometer. And 110, perfect. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to pour this into the yeast flour mixture. Beautiful. And stir it gently. Where's my spoon? Let's see if We'd have to knead it for about seven minutes. I like using my KitchenAid. You can do it by hand. I see this is a beautiful dough that would probably be very easy to do by hand, but I am going to do it in the KitchenAid. So let me get that set up. All right, so I have my dough in the KitchenAid. I'm gonna start mixing it. Of course, it would help if the power was on. There we go. Get it all mixed up and it's going to mix for about seven minutes so i'll bring you back after seven minutes nelly are you going to wait yeah he's waiting hey everybody we're back the dough is beautiful i used the kitchen aid i wanted to mention that you're supposed to add two teaspoons of cardamom to the dough and i didn't do that and that's because i know melly's going to have some so i try not to have too many extra things in it but really Swedes love their cardamom, and we love cardamom. I love cardamom lattes, but for this recipe, we're just gonna skip that. So here's the dough. So the next thing, it's beautiful dough. It just kneaded and mixed so nicely. So this is at the stage where we are going to do our first dough rice. So we're putting it in a ball. Oh, we gotta grease the bowl. So that means we're gonna put a little bit of vegetable oil on it a tiny bit so let me do that let's put a little bit on my hand Reset the bowl Laura's beautiful bowl and then we're going to stick it in there here we go 
and it says form the bowl, excuse me, form the dough into a ball, place it in a grease bowl, cover with a damp towel. So I dampened this cover and let it rise in a warm space for about an hour. So we're gonna do that or until it's doubled in size. So we'll bring you back after that. In the meantime, I'm gonna start making the filling and the filling is going to be a half a cup of butter, one and a, one, 113 grams, half a cup or 100 grams of packed light brown sugar, two tablespoons of cinnamon, one teaspoon of cardamom, I'm gonna skip the cardamom, one teaspoon of vanilla extract. And so, Melly can have the cinnamon and the vanilla extract. Okay, we'll see you soon. Okay, while the dough is rising, we're gonna make the filling. And the filling ingredients are half a cup or 113 grams of unsalted butter, which I have right here. And then I need 100 grams of light packed brown sugar, but it doesn't really have to be packed because I'm just gonna put in 100 grams. And then two tablespoons of cinnamon. I'm gonna skip the teaspoon of cardamom and then a teaspoon of vanilla. So let's get this going with 100 grams of the brown sugar. It's funny because when I was younger, I never understood like why it would be so much easier to use weights instead of the measuring cups. And then now it's just like, oh my gosh, so much easier. So there is the sugar. And then we need the two tablespoons of the cinnamon. Oops, open this up. one and there is two mmm smells so good so let's stir that around get that nice and combined don't you just love the inside of like cinnamon rolls and stuff that's like the best part and then about a teaspoon of this this is like a teaspoon Mmm, gosh, it's such a strong smell. Cinnamon it smells so good. And then, move this aside. Let's combine this butter. It's soft, but it'd be hard. I'll just use my hands. Yeah, oh gosh. So, I'll go ahead and stir this together. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. And then, it'll be all ready for when we roll out the dough. Okay, we'll bring you back. And of course, Melly, still right there underfoot. It's a good baking dog. So it's been an hour, and here is our beautiful, beautiful dough. It looks amazing. It doubled in size, and it's nice and warm with a nice yeasty smell. And you know, I've had friends say, oh, it's too long to bake. I don't have the time. How can you do it? It's because you're retired. But you know, I always baked. And I think it's because, well, number one, I'm good at multitasking, but it's not like you're standing around waiting for the dough for an hour. You're busy doing things. I was doing dishes. I did some emails. I walked the dog. It's like, and it doesn't have to be exactly an hour. So I really encourage you to bake things from scratch. I think it's really healthy for your mind and for your body and your spirit because like you're connecting with ingredients that are wholesome instead of buying them and you don't know what was put into them. There's no chemicals when you're making things from scratch. You're just using the things that our ancestors used, flour, sugar, butter, salt. So I encourage you. Okay, so now we are going to roll out our dough and uh, we're gonna use a rolling pin and we're gonna roll it to 22 by 15 inch rectangle. So I'm gonna do that right now. I, I actually, I like rolling on parchment paper because it's just, I don't know, I just have a hard time knowing how, um, you know, the size of it and all that kind of stuff. So i roll it out. I don't know how well this is getting in the camera. Oh, here we go. I see I got some smudgy on it. That's okay. And what 
to work your dough too much because then it gets tough. But then we got to get it into the right rectangular shape so we're ready to lay in our any filling that we need for our candle bird. Yeah, cinnamon rolls. Swedish style. I'll bring you back when I've got it ready, because this is probably boring for you. Well, unless I can keep talking, let me talk. Let me talk about the fact that my grandpa died 20 years ago, and I just can't believe it. He was my favorite person. And uh, he was Portuguese Hawaiian, and my grandma fell in love with him because they lived next door, and she would hear him singing and playing his ukulele, or his guitar, he was a musician. In fact, up until he was in his 80s, he was in a band called Tony's Cronies. And this is a funny story. One time my husband and I, I don't know if we were dating or if we were husband and wife yet. Um, we were at a Japanese garden in Hayward. And we went past the senior center there and we heard music playing. And I was like, you know, that sounds like the kind of music my grandpa plays. And so we peeked our head in and sure enough, it was my grandpa's band. Well, it wasn't his band, it was Tony's band. Yeah, it was Tony's cronies, but yeah, isn't that the coolest story? So that was really cool. My grandpa would sing in Hawaiian. He didn't sing in English that much, actually. Um, my grandma sang, and my mom sang, and my Uncle Phil sang. We had a very musical family, a lot of singing and dancing at the family parties. I miss that so very much, and I'm so sad my kids did not get to experience that because my grandma died when I was 13. And I mean, Jacob probably did. He was 12 when my grandpa died, but not really, not, not, not that much. So that makes me sad, but what can you do? Um, but I adored my grandpa. He was really funny. He would say like really funny things like, I thought you were smart, comb your hair. <laughs> and I'd be like, I am smart. And he said, really, how do you spell that? It just was always just so funny and silly, but quiet also. He had this big belly and very skinny uh, arms and legs. And uh, I always call it the Raposa curse because I have it too. All of our relatives have it. And uh, he loved root beer. If you went to his house, he would have um, like root beer, two liter bottles. Is that what they are? I don't know. I don't uh, drink soda, but <clears throat> like two little liter bottles on the counter of the uh, <laughs> um, root beer, so funny. And when I would go to my parents, or my grandparents, I'd go to my grandparents every weekend. And my grandpa was the cook, and he would always make Casper hot dogs, these like really yummy kind of hot dogs. I mean, I don't eat hot dogs anymore, but they were so good. And uh, he would steam the buns, like put it over a colander of boiling water with a tea towel on top. And uh, he made the best vanilla milkshakes. I have never tasted a vanilla milkshake as good as the ones that he made. So uh, I've, I've tried, I tried to recreate it and it's impossible. So I don't know what he did, some secret I wish I knew. He was just so wonderful. My grandpa was so wonderful, so funny and just uh, God, such a character. He walked every day. He walked, in fact, he was out walking when he had his stroke and uh, that is not why he died. I think he, he had to go, he couldn't live on his own anymore when he was 83 because of the stroke. I mean, he could still talk and stuff, but he was super forgetful and would repeat things. So my mom tried to take care of him at her house and uh, it was just too much for her. So then uh, he went into a little home and he got colon cancer and he died about, mm, I don't know, six months later on August 9th. Okay, so we've got our beautiful rectangle. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna spread our cinnamon filling that we made earlier all over it, but not at the very top. So I'll, I'll start down here and then push it in. Smear it all in, because we're gonna fold it like a uh, envelope. <laughs> but let's smear this in first before we do any of that 
all the way to the end. Get all of this yummy filling. And I would show you Melly, but my hands are such a mess right now. But he is right here, aren't you, Mouse? Yep, my trusty steed. Anyway, my grandpa, Sally, my daughter, Amy, really didn't know my grandpa. She died when he was, uh, when she was 18 months old, but he knew her and he called her a little pip and he was right about that. She was a little pip and still is at 21. <laughs> Although I'm very excited for her and her boyfriend. They just got a place in San Diego and I just love that she's living her dream. She always said that she wanted to live down South when she grew up. And I had told her like, once you graduate college, you should go where you want to be because what ends up happening is you get a job wherever you are and you stay there. I mean, of course, not everybody does that. Maybe I'm just talking about my life or my friends, but I'm just so glad she's living her dream. And she is working really hard and the apartment's super cute. They just moved in today. They were here last night. They left here about 1.30 in the morning to drive all night to San Diego and, uh, yeah, I got the keys today. Okay, I'm gonna wash my hand and then I will be back. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it like an envelope. I'm gonna bring it up in thirds. Bring it up, fold it, up. and then I'm gonna fold, fold it again. And then lift it up a little bit. We're gonna Let's see, it needs to be 15 by eight. So we got 15 here and here. Okay, so let's let twist it this way and let's roll it out. Press out all the bubbles. Oh, smash. Mm. I think I pressed too hard. Let me wash this and I'll come right back. All right, let's do a little gent more gently this time. <laughs> it's okay. It's so filled with yumminess. It's gonna be a moshing. What a yummy mess we have here. Of course, you know me, whenever I make anything, I create a humongous mess and have lots of screw ups. And you know what? I don't care. It's all good. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut my dough with my pizza cutter. And I'm going to twist it. So, here we go. Can you see me twisting it? Yeah. And then I'm gonna wrap it around my hands two times. And then I'm gonna tie it in a knot. See it? And I'm gonna put it on the pan. Get it ready for the second, uh, second rising, second coming. So get it going, make it longer. Yep. Twist it around my finger. One, two. Twist it around in a knot. See it? So cute. That's a tiny one. It's a little baby one. And we'll do this one. So we're cutting them in about. Uh, about two centimeters, 20, about 20 inches long. Yep. Twisting it. This one's super long, I'm gonna cut it in half. Okay, there we go. Cutting, I'm gonna wrap it around my finger. One, two, tie it in a knot and push it under. So it knots up. Oh, Nelly's going nuts. It smells really good, doesn't it, Mouse? Yep. Yep or do. Around my finger to. Oh, let's come back to that one. Cut it. And you're making it longer. It's so about 20 inches this way. And then you wrap it around your finger twice and tie it in a knot underneath. Looks like a rosette. I think I'll put these bigger ones here. These and the littler ones can bake together. Oh, we're supposed to get 12 of these. I don't think I'm getting 12. Typical me baking. All right. Wrap it around my finger. 
here two times, tie it in a knot. I'm gonna cut this part off. Smells so good. Twisty twisties. Just it. Wrap it around my finger. Tie it in a knot. Six. Not half as much. That's okay. That's okay. Seven. Maybe we can use this extra to see if we can get eight. Tiny ones, tiny ones. Nine. Don't think we're gonna be able to uh, tie it in knot. All right, what do we get? Nine. We got nine. Okay, let me show you. I gotta wash my hands first. Okay, so here are the cinnamon buns, the kebaburu. And we are going to let it have a second rise. I'm gonna cover them again. And then before we put them in the oven at 375, we're gonna brush them with an egg wash. And we've got our Swedish <coughs> pearl sugar here, which is gonna be awesome. And Melly's excited. I hope you're excited. You know, my grandpa was not a baker. He was a chef in the army also. He cooked and he also, uh, like I said, was a great ice cream, milk, vanilla milkshake chef. And my love of ice cream came from him. Now, my grandpa's favorite thing to eat was Kentucky Fried Chicken. He absolutely loved it. And every time I would visit him, I would always swing by Kentucky Fried Chicken and get him a box. And on his 20th anniversary, my brother said, hey, I'm gonna go to Kentucky Fried Chicken to celebrate grandpa and I was like oh I'm totally in that sounds great and even if I don't eat chicken I love the biscuits there and the coleslaw but I think it's really cool that my brother thought of doing that it used to be every year on the anniversary of his passing I would um, go to Baskin Robbins and then I stopped doing that because <laughs> it just seemed unhealthy. I mean, I always think of my grandpa. I, I definitely think of him not just on the anniversary of his passing. But um, I just love that my brother suggested that. Okay, so let's let these rise again. And I'll bring you back when it's time to brush them with the egg wash and put on the Swedish pearl sugar. Okay, so Nellie was barking, but that's okay. So now we look at, oh, look at how great they have risen. They look amazing. Look at that. So now we're at the point we're going to brush them with an egg wash before we add the large pearl sugar, the Swedish sugar. They're so yummy. Now I don't have a pastry brush, so I'm just going to use my fingers because that's what you do when you don't have things. So there, it's going to make it nice and shiny. Look how cute these are, oh my goodness. Darling, oh wow, these are humongous. You know, I probably could have made 12 out of these if I hadn't made these so big. But you know what, it's all good. Okay, they're gonna be lovely. And then you are preheating the oven 375, I forgot to mention that. Okay, so now I'm gonna sprinkle some of this Swedish pearl sugar on them, which will give it a really nice, let me get a spoon. Nellie, we're to the exciting part. Are you excited? What was all that barking about? Just because Daddy came home from Costco? Yeah, okay. Put some sugar on it. Oh, it looks just like in the bakeries in Sweden, which we'll be showing you when we go to Sweden on September 17th. Can't wait for that. That's going to be really fun. Have lots of fikas, pastries. We'll go to Copenhagen and Finland and France and Barcelona and Lisbon's gonna be great. Okay, so we're gonna put these in the oven at 375 for about 15 minutes. All right, the time has come, Melly. Oh, look at those beauties in the oven. Let's take them out now. Oh, they smell. It smells like Cinnabon in here. Mm. Oh my gosh, would you look at how beautiful these are? I know. 
gorgeous. So we're gonna let him set for five minutes and then we're gonna eat these babies. All right, here we are in front of the beautiful, beautiful cinnamon roll, the sweetest cinnamon roll with the pearl sugar instead of the icing that of course we love, the American style. Um, I realized what I did wrong when it all splooshed out is it said roll gently and I wasn't very gentle. Okay, let's take a bite. Let's see how it tastes. Oh, look at that yummy goodness. Oh my gosh. I would pay so much money for this. Wouldn't you, Mally? Here, you have egg. Now let's see if I can get you a piece without cinnamon on it. Ouch. It's very hot. Ooh. It's very okay, well, I don't know if Mally and I got this last bite because my phone said I was out of memory. So here it is, this beautiful piece. It is so good, you guys. The bread is so soft. Look at that, and delicate. Although, I would really like some powdered sugar cream cheese icing on it. <laughs> this is a great recipe, everybody. I baked it for 18 minutes. It said 15 to 18. I think I had to do it longer because I had some big old buns. <laughs> All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care. Bye. Thanks again for watching.